Hi, it's Michael from Fujifilm. You know, lenses are really cool devices. You know, most photographers try to get as many as they can. They're obsessed with them. Uh, they can be tiny and compact. They can be made to let in a lot of light. You know, I myself am rather fond of them because I've been wearing them on my face since I was eight years old. Um, but lenses can be really, really simple, like, say, just a uh, drop of water or a little tiny pinhole. A pinhole will act as a lens. It will bend light and give you an image. Or they can be remarkably complex, like many modern zooms that can have 20 individual elements in them, all with different exotic curves and shapes to them. You know, some made of glass or some made of plastic or different kinds of glass and some coated and some not coated. So there's a wider range of what optical design is all about. Now, optical manufacturers have to balance a variety of considerations. So those simple lenses, such as the drop of water and the pinhole, are actually full of defects. Uh, they may not even be sharp at all. They could just basically give you a picture, but it won't even be a good picture. And this is something that you should really keep in mind because these days it's very common to go out to the used department at the camera store or online and get a lens for $10, $20 from a camera that was made maybe 50 years ago. And you use it on your modern camera because you can see that it feels different, okay? And it's fun and it's cheap. But designers have to balance all these different defects because they're dealing with physics, uh, engineering, manufacturing, cost, and of course, what does the customer actually want? So nobody ever makes a perfect lens. All lenses balance different kinds of characteristics and qualities. Now, cinematographers in storytelling with movies have known this for a long, long time. And it's very, very common, especially in scripts that take place over different time periods, to use lenses that were made in different time periods or that came from different manufacturers that evoke different characters. And the lens then actually is a very important part of the image creation tool. This is especially important now with modern digital sensors that are getting better and better in resolution and better and better in noise, which means the lens you put on front of the camera now becomes extremely important. Now, there are certain defects or characteristics, like uh, in particular chromatic aberration and distortion. Uh, and distortion is the bending of lines. Chromatic aberration is like the color fringing you get in high contrast areas. Uh, that can actually be dealt with largely by in-camera processing or in post-production software. So they can be fixed by way of software. However, with video, because you're doing 24, 60, maybe 120 frames a second, you've got so much data, it's way, way better to have a lens that minimizes those, uh, those deficiencies instead of trying to do it in software later. Now, some things, though, can't be corrected in software. And for video, this is really a couple of things that you should be on the lookout for, especially with older vintage lenses. One is called breathing, and it's called that because just like your body expands and contracts as you breathe in and out, this is what happens to the edge of the frame. It gets bigger and smaller as you change focus. And you can see in this one comparison with the one on the left that breathes a lot and the one on the right that barely breathes at all, there's a big difference. Now, every lens breathes to some extent. The point is that there are lenses that do it so little that you don't even notice it. But if you are going to be embarking on a cinema project, especially with older lenses, you really need to check this out because it can change the way your scene feels greatly. Another thing to be aware of is the change of focus when you zoom a lens. Now, this may not be a factor at all with continuous autofocus, but in movie making, we're doing manual focus almost always because of the subtlety of control you can get with your hand. A par focal lens will stay wherever you focused it as you zoom. 
and one that's varifocal will not. It will drift. And especially if you're an event shooter and you're doing weddings and concerts and things like that, where you do have to rely on zooming as opposed to moving the camera, trying to juggle both zooming and focusing at the same time can be a real headache. Hey, thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. See you next time.